Hello and welcome you to family. This is Jana Marsh. We are huddling up today with our student fiscal services team. Wang Yan and Cameron Daniel Smith are UW alumni. So not only do they know how to talk about tuition, how to pay them, how to have your Husky remind themselves and you if you are helping pay the tuition bill and what happens when things are late and how they can help. Um, also, since they are UW alumni, they're very understanding and aware of what your Huskies are about to encounter. So we are looking forward to this conversation and let's huddle up with Hua and Cameron. Hi, UW family. We are here talking to Hua Nian and Cameron Daniel Smith from our wonderful student fiscal services team. Hi, folks. Do you want to do a brief introduction? Let's start with Hua. Hi. Um, so my name is Hua Nguyen, and I'm a senior advisor here at uh, Student Fiscal Services. Um, I've lived in Washington my entire life. Um, I'm married and live in Montlake Terrace. Um, you know, honestly, kind of coming up with the origin story is kind of the hardest bit, <laughs> to be frank. But um, so, uh, um, for personally, I enjoy baking, cooking, gardening, gaming, and, and traveling. Um, I was born in Tacoma and lived kind of in the hilltop area. Went to elementary school there. Um, moved to the Lacey Olympia area. I always have to include the Olympia because most people don't know where, <laughs> where Lacey is. Um, and so yeah, went to middle and high school there, uh, finally moved to Seattle to go to the UW, so alumni. <laughs> um, my family wasn't really particularly well off, um, and so we didn't really have a lot of resources. So uh, ultimately when we did go, when I did go to the UW, um, I had to rely on financial aid. Um, I ended up kind of living on my own off campus. Uh, with some of my high school friends. Um, they are probably one of the biggest influences in my life as they're still my best friends to this day. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, part of living and going to college was being able to freely explore, learn, and kind of discover what it was to be a young adult. Um, and <laughs> if I'm gonna be perfectly honest, I uh, didn't really feel like I was truly adulting until a few years ago, um, but <laughs> um, anyways, I uh, graduated with a bachelor's in communication and American ethics studies, where um, at the time of graduating, it was right during the recession of uh, 2008, um, worked on the AV for a number of years, doing retail light property management, and then um, finally applied to the UW, um, working for SFS this whole time. Um, Oh my yeah, goodness. Yeah, whole time. <laughs> well, it sounds like when Hua has not left the AV for a very long time, he's just staying here, which is, no, that's great. Like, we'd love to hear um, uh, all of these really great stories. I'm sure that uh, one of our families probably heard little bits and pieces that felt like, oh, we're from Tacoma and I am from Olympia and, and um we, we have those kind of shared experiences. I'd love to see um, if Cameron can also share a little bit of his origin story at this point. Totally, totally. So yeah, I'm Cameron Daniel Smith, uh, born in Colorado, but family moved to Seattle really quick. And I've been in Seattle my whole life effectively. Um, I applied to a number of in-state schools because I didn't want to pay the money for out of state because that's expensive. And I was lucky enough to have UW accept me, which is, as a Seattle family, right in my neighborhood. So I hopped on that, plus UW is just prestigious, so it just sounds cooler. Um, and I planned on living at home through college to save on money. And while my folks didn't ask me to pay for rent, which I'm thankful for, they did ask that I work uh, while I was there, because they didn't want me sitting on my butt playing video games uh, during my free time. So I ended up working two jobs. During the weekends, I worked at a boutique and mail dispatch, a two-in-one. Uh, and then during the week, I took a position as a student worker at Student Fiscal Services, um, which was a neat job because 
even though it was during the week, uh, I, they had me work less than 20 hours. Uh, so I never felt overworked. I had plenty of time for homework. And they worked around my class schedule. So every quarter I'd send them my classes and they would just work around it. So it worked great. Um, I stayed as a student worker with Student Fiscal Services until the spring quarter of my junior year. At which point they offered, uh, well, they, there was a position open for a full-time employee. And I decided that I, I could work a full-time employee and juggle school at the same time. So I applied. They, they accepted me. And now four years later, here I am. I'm uh, now a scholarship advisor. Um, so I've moved up a rung or two since I first got on. And I'm having a grand old time. Oh my gosh, what a great pair of stories and also really great inspiration for folks. I'm just going to make sure people are reminded there's great student jobs, especially for <laughs> financially minded um, young folks, which is really great. Juan and Cameron are wonderful examples of that. Um, and I wanted to ask, since both of you decided to come to UW, I'd love to hear what was that? You know, right when we're talking to our first year families, I often get to say hello and also say, what was what was the thing that kind of tipped over from that the UW was the place for you um, when you started choosing to go here, when you decided this is the place for me? So like Cameron, um, in high school, I thought, you know, hey, I want to go in state because, again, my like I mentioned earlier, my family wasn't necessarily well off and kind of paying that in-state tuition was very, you know, was very enticing. Um, but honestly, uh, I had a very early memory as a kid. Uh, my brother-in-law, who was married to my sister there, um, he was a grad student at the UW. And like when I was eight, maybe 10, somewhere around that age, um, he took me to, to visit the campus. Um, and he took me specifically to the hub, at least before it was <laughs> renovated. Um, so there was a time where it looked com kind of a lot different. <laughs> Anyways, um, he, he had taken me there and since I was a kid, he figured, oh, I'll just pawn him off to, they had this arcade and bowling alley at the very basement and they still do to this day. Um, they yeah. still do, it's great. <laughs> and I, as a kid, I was just like odd. I was like, oh, I can go to school and still play video games? ingenious <laughs> i i want to go here um and so that that and then being able to see the rest of the campus was great and all but as, as a kid i was it was quite impressionable and i was like wow i i can yeah again go to school become a, an adult and still you know have some of those same interests and that oh that always kind of stuck with me um so when i decided in, in high school where to apply to the UW was pretty much the only school i applied to and fortunately got it. Whoa. <gasps> Such confidence. <laughs> also really cool. <laughs> like all my, That's so all my cool. friends applied to like two or three different, yeah. you know, or more schools. Most of, a lot of rejections of that, that whole scary bit of it. But yeah, I was, I guess I was pretty confident <laughs> this was the school for me. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Cameron, you mentioned a little bit about similar kind of in-state things as well. I do love the fiscally minded group that we have ourselves in. I'm just going to say I also went in-state. I grew up in California. I had to choose between Cal and UCLA, and there was not any chance to go to the East Coast at all because, you know, we, we are an immigrant family, and it was also very smart thing to do. Not that our out-of-state families or international families are like... It's just like for our family, it was the right thing to do financially and educationally. That was really great. But Cameron, yeah, if you, what other places were you kind of flirting with, but eventually picked UW? Not too many, um, in part because, um, gosh, it's been so many years, but I remember there was some associated cost with it, it applying I think maybe it was like sending test scores in or something like that but you had to pay money and uh my family was like we're not paying a lot of money you get like two or three schools and I'm like well okay here so I applied for Western Washington University um yeah my, my sister's there um uh she's having a great time uh then UW proper and then UW Bothell I think are the only three schools that I applied for 
Um, and I'll admit, I didn't think I'd make it into you, Dub. I, I, um, I mean, uh, perhaps I'm just a bit, a bit of a pessimist, but I was like, I'm probably gonna have to go to Western. Most of uh, the people I knew went to Western. Um, but no, I was lucky enough to get admitted. Um, I mean, of the Washington State schools, one of the reasons why UW was on it was primarily due to the local aspect. Um, I mean, you know, it was the whole thing of like, yes, UW is very prestigious and it has some wonderful different programs. Uh, but I didn't know what I wanted to go to studying, go studying for. So I didn't go there for like the medical school. Uh, I didn't look at any schools for any particular programs because I didn't know what I wanted to study. Um, and yeah, I'd been to UW at field trips, so I knew how beautiful the campus was, but I'm also not too seduced by the idea of a wonderful campus. That's not really for me. So it was more of the fact, oh, I can live at home rent free and I don't need to pay for groceries or, uh, thanks to the UW pass program, I don't need to pay for like gas or transportation so I can live at home and just save money. Um, cause one of my main goals was to get out of school debt free, which I was able to do because it was UW, but most likely if I had gone to Western or even UW Bothell, um, it might not have been the case because it would have been a lot trickier to stay uh, at home. Uh, and, and like even UW Bothell commuting to UW Bothell, like every single day would be brutal. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Well, thanks for sharing your decision-making process. I mean, our families are probably fresh off of that conversation with their students, but it seems like there was a lot of really intentional reasons for why you all wanted to come here. Um, and I, I'd love to just have one, um, just to talk about where you are, what your roles are, and, um, and how you two work together uh, at, at Student Fiscal Services. Sure, um, I'll go ahead and start. So um, uh, my roles changed quite a bit. Well, when I started at um, Student Fiscal Services, um, I was originally um, hired on as a program coordinator or PC for short. Um, basically, we were kind of like the first contact with uh, students um, or families uh, when they had concerns about tuition, billing, um, finances, really, um, when it came to you know attending at the UW. Um, I then moved on to a um, supervisor role where I, um, I believe Cameron was under my wing at that time, <laughs> um, uh, at when he was at least a student worker then. Um, and uh, from, from there was a customer service manager for a period of time uh, and then moved on to a, another advisory role within within the department. Um, honestly, I work with Cameron every single day, much like uh, my, the rest of my colleagues. We, we kind of have an emphasis on, you know, collaborating, looking at problems together. If there is a situation where one of us is a little unsure, you know, I know I can count on every single one of my teammates to, um, you know, help with that. There's, it's, it's great. It's wonderful. Um, so we actively, you know, care and, um, love working with our students and families um, and we'll work together to make sure that you know we can help them with any kind of you know questions or concerns they may have um, kind of my role nowadays though is more um, working with departments um, in a invoice receivables uh, aspect um, where we process and receive payments for any kind of goods and services the department may offer to uh, folks outside of the university but since I have a lot of that experience with uh, customer service, um, I'm always there for backup and support. Um, so it, it's a wonderful work working area, um, wonderful team, wonderful manager. Um, I really enjoy it. That's great. It sounds like you have a really lovely UW family over there. So that's nice. Um, Cameron, I didn't know that you had such intersection with Fahad. You started working together. That's so great. Well, and, and uh, the funny thing is, uh, if we're talking about hire date, uh, I have seniority over Wah because he was hired <laughs> after me. But but when it comes to knowledge, he surpasses me because nah. uh, you know, as I said, as a student worker, maximum twenty hours a week. He was working full time, so he quickly covered all all the time that I had attended in in a few months. Um, but, uh, it is always funny, um, 
just the, the fact that I was hired before him. But no, I started as a student worker. When I got hired full time, it was a regular customer service employee. So if you were calling in, walking into the office, good chance you're interacting with me. Um, and I still do a lot of that customer service work, but now I'm the scholarship advisor. Um, so one of the things our office manages is just scholarships coming in from outside entities. It could be charities, companies, etc. So if there's ever a check coming in, um, it'll come through me. I'll assign it to student accounts and make sure the money gets used correctly. So that's kind of my current gig while also backing up customer service. Uh, but yeah, we're a very tight knit community. So everyone kind of helps out each other at some point. Yeah, it sounds great. So I just wanted to also kind of step back a little bit and just say we have we have a lot of first year families. Some of our uh, upperclassmen families are also a part of, of this kind of also tend to listen to the podcast. So I wanted to kind of back up and say for our international families, first gen families, well, how would you describe your program? Um, or what is student fiscal services? <laughs> And has it always been called that? So, no, it, it hasn't always been called student fiscal services. At one point in time, it was referred to as, and I've only been here for six and a half years, but so if I recall, student finance office was one of its names. I, I don't know if there is a, a, a different name even before that. Um, considering that we're the main bursar's office, we've um, kind of been a entity in some form at the UW for, you know, since it was founded. Um, and, and so, yeah, we've always been a presence. We've always been here to help um, students. It doesn't, it didn't really matter if you were a resident student, non-resident student, international student, you know, we'll, we're there for, for all students um, when it comes to, you know, your questions reg regarding, you know, how, how tuition is paid, whether that's paid from a, you know, a domestic or even international source. Um, most recently, when there were, you know, global issues like the, the war in Ukraine or um, when the pandemic first started, you know, you had students from, from Ukraine and, and China, respectively, who had, you know, issues going on. And, you know, we will work with those students one on one, case by case basis. Um, and figure out, you know, hey, what's the best solution for, you know, still making sure that your tuition is paid because that's invariably just a component of going to school. Um, you know, how can we make that work with all the stuff that's going on globally? <laughs> you know, things that are uh, out of people's hands, right? Um, so, you know, even though we like to help students equally across the board, you know, we, we are there for, we don't, see students as, you know, students, you know. Um, if you have something going on in your life, uh, something that is um, making things hard, financially paying, you know, again, paying for tuition, finding sources, resources, uh, you know, we'll do our best to, you know, help um, help you and, um, or at least make, get you talking to the right folks at the UW, whether that's, you know, financial aid, international student services, the registrar, um, you know, there's, there's other groups at the UW that, you know, help with finding scholarships and things like that. That sounds great. And I feel like with how you've described your office and what you do, it feels like it's a pretty big enough team. And I was wondering, Cameron, if you could talk about how many folks are in, are in the student fiscal services team. Yeah, so we've got 22 people split across four teams. Each team kind of manages a different aspect of our business. Um, when it comes to students and parents who just need help or have questions, they'll be working with either our customer service team, which like I'm on, for example, or our accounts receivables team, uh, which is a team that WA is on. Um, so these are our two kind of customer facing teams. But our customer service and accounts receivables teams couldn't do the work that they do without our support teams, specifically our accounting group and our uh, computing staff. So they kind of work with the how all the money flows for the accounting team and all of our tech related things, uh, websites, systems, uh, programs for our computing group. Um, and uh, we're kind of 
made up of a diverse crew. Um, you know, we've got UW alumni in the case of like myself, um, but we also have uh, one of our customer service folks is from Wazoo, uh, mm. a, a trader in our midst. <laughs> um, we've uh, adopted that poog, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, we, we've, we've brainwashed him um, <laughs> as much as he likes to resist it. But uh, yeah, we have we have all sort of group, crew. Uh, we have a big crew, and they're they're all lovely folks. Lovely folks. Mm-hmm, I'm sure. When do you uh, see a lot of students? Like when during the academic year? There are definitely peaks. Uh, as the tuition office, and we manage the tuition bill and tuition payments. A lot of the questions we get revolve around the paying of tuition. Uh, tuition is due on the third Friday of the quarter, so that's usually our busiest day. And the uh, weeks that lead up to that Friday uh, are always increasingly busy. We call them the first three weeks uh, as our as our busy period, and that's for every single quarter, autumn, winter, spring, and summer. The first three weeks are always very busy. Um, autumn quarter is the busiest of all the quarters, and that's just because that's when we have the most students, especially the most new students, which means they're trying to feel their way around paying tuition. Um, so definitely if it comes to, if you're gonna ask a student fiscal services a question, uh, do it as early as you can. Uh, we try and get answers back within 24 hours, uh, even during our busiest times, but definitely the earlier, the better. By the way, how do you meet with students? Is it in person? Is it virtual, um, email, phone calls, all of the above? <laughs> <laughs> Most of the above, I, I would say. Um, so we uh, we do have office hours. Um, that's currently, that's Monday through Friday, 11, uh, excuse me, noon to 3 p.m. Um, so folks, families, Students can come in, ask us questions uh, regarding uh, your respective student account. Um, if you have concerns about, you know, scholarships, we'll send Cameron to the front. <laughs> um, uh, we do have uh, a couple student workers there to kind of field most uh, general questions. Um, however, uh, we'll have senior staff, other advisors who um, kind of work in their specific areas. Uh, like we have a third um, third party advisor who works on uh, sponsored billing or um, a loans advisor. Um, generally, we'll have folks there to kind of um, address specific things. But um, so, anyways, we we have the in-office time. Uh, we're also available by phone um, from ten to three. Um, no, excuse me, ten to four. Um, and um, chat chats available through our website. So kind of the same hours as the phone there. Um, so email, phone, chat, in person. That's great. And I, um, as a person who can, uh, who often um, reaches out to the student fiscal services team, it is, um, they're very, very responsive. And this is not just because I'm a, like a fellow staff member. They're, it's either they have really good self-service information or are folks that can help you get to the right place. Um, I would love to ask the following. When you have a first-year student, a second-year student, maybe some juniors and seniors that haven't even visited you in a while. (laughs) What what type of questions do you usually get from them when they come and visit? Hopefully it's not panicked, but, you know, it could be. (laughs) So, um, uh, Cameron, are there some, like, burning questions that, (laughs) that tend to happen during those first three weeks? <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll get all sorts of financial-related questions. Um, you know, our most common are in relation to tuition, like how much is my tuition bill? How do I pay? Uh, a lot of the questions that will pertain to me will be in regards to scholarships. So it'll be something like, has my scholarship arrived yet? Or how much is my scholarship for? Because I don't remember. Um, or how is my scholarship being split across the academic year? So a lot of scholarship-related questions. Um, we'll also get a, some tax questions, though that's usually during the tax season. That's because our office oversees the 1098T, which is a tax form that reports how much tuition has been paid. So all, all of our UW students will want their 1098T form, but sometimes they'll have questions like, how do I find it? How do I read it? And so we have a, actually a tax advisor specifically for that purpose um, during the tax season. And then um, uh, we also will have um, questions about financial aid. 
uh, though that's always a tricky subject because while our office will use financial aid to pay tuition or if uh, or to pay housing or send the extra financial aid to the student we don't actually award financial aid that's a different office uh, the office of student financial aid are the ones that fill out the paperwork offer you the money uh, and work with students in regards to all the prep for the financial aid. Our office only comes in at the tail end. So uh, if you do have financial aid questions and you call us, there's a good chance we might just refer you to financial aid. We're sorry, but it's just not our business. Um, similar to housing, housing has a separate office as well. Uh, so if you come to us with housing questions, once again, we're sorry, but we just can't help with that. We'll refer you to the housing and food services office. Oh, I think that's an oh, that's a great a clarification point for our students and families as well. It's kind of like, these are the folks that deal with the loans and the grants, and that's you know our financial aid office folks. Their invoices, payments, reminders feels very much your uh, purview. And then housing is its own beast and entity <laughs> when it comes to that. But I wanted to ask um, this is more a question for Hua. That the conversation we've been having is students coming out, coming to your office and asking questions. Um, do you, what would you suggest and what do parents or families of students need to do um, when they start talking to you folks and asking for questions about tuition, about how to pay the bill, or how do they even know about it? If you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah. So we, um, you know, often communicate to students through through email, kind of sending those like prompting things. When you, when you first start coming to, uh, first get admitted and start coming to the school, you'll get those, again, prompting notifications saying, hey, this is what you need to do. This is what your bill will eventually be like, um, or this is when it's available. Um, usually at that point, uh, we start getting folks asking kind of those initial questions like, you know, I have such and such thing set up to pay for school. Um, how does that work with your system? And a lot of times we we work as that kind of bridge to help make what makes sense for families uh, make sense with how it works at the UW. And so making those connections is kind of like the, the primary thing that we do. Um, and so, you know, if, if folks have the, and honestly, if you have any question whatsoever, you know, it, it could be, um, I have, <laughs> oftentimes we'll get uh, students or families saying, you know, the first line is like, oh, I have a silly question, right? It's not silly. I mean, there's a reason why. It's never yeah, silly. Yeah, it's never silly. <laughs> yeah. You, you have a question. It's never yeah, silly. We're here for, for you, right? To help navigate how it works here at higher ed, right? Um, so, yeah, if, if you have any question related to that, um, you know, aspect of paying tuition, how things are uh, financed, how it works at other, you know, departments, we'll, we'll do our best to kind of um, help, again, navigate that course. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of our families, this is, for first-year families, this might be the first time that their students are kind of taking a, a bit more of an active role about learning about finances, learning about money, um, <laughs> learning that there are bills, they need to be paid on time. <laughs> There's some reminding. Um, uh, so it's it's always a nice, uh, it's kind of a nice teachable moment, learning moment, uh, a way for them to kind of grow and expand. It sounded like when you both were um, starting out your time at UW, there was already kind of a financially, fiscally minded <laughs> aspects to your decision making. And so um, I'd love to just invite the two of you. We usually ask like, what are the four, four things you'd like first year students and families to know about you and your program? And I'm happy to split it to two and two. So <laughs> Cameron can get two and Kwa can get two. Um, just to kind of talk, like sometimes it's really, really scary to delve into finances when you are kind of 17 or 18 or 16 and not really knowing what that's about. So if you have any thoughtful advice, please share. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so uh, we kind of alluded to it earlier um, already. We're, we're, 
we're available to to chat or talk about any questions you have regarding tuition, uh, regarding scholarships, um, and um, you know if you encounter any difficulty paying, you know, on time, or if you have kind of you know any concern with with that, reaching out to our office is best. Um, that way we can advise properly, let you, um, give you some advice on what you as a student or your family um, may want to look at in kind of, you know, prepping for that or making sure that, you know, we get things going for the future quarters so that's not an issue um, down the road. Um, I do want to make an additional plug in as far as like kind of getting prepped uh, before, you know, starting school and uh, basically the first year programs that <laughs> we're, um, is, is a great program to kind of, you know, get familiar with going to school here for both students and parents. So a little plug in for you guys. Um, they're, they're a wonderful team um, that, you know, helps for that specific purpose is so that it's not as, you know, there isn't, you know, it's not like you're wading through fog or anything. You, you kind of have a good understanding of how things roll around here. Uh, so yeah, for you, Cameron. Yeah, I mean, my kind of helpful tip that it definitely helped me, because I mean, while I was going into college with like the fiscal goal of get out of school without debt, I didn't really know how money worked. I mean, I knew the basic thing, you know, you give a person $5, they'll give you a cup of coffee. Um, but that was kind of the limit of my knowledge. Um, all of my fiscal education uh, came from the employees at Student Fiscal Services and other employees at UW in that when I had a question, I would reach out to someone. And, um, you know, I was able to pick up a lot of uh, fiscal tips real quick just because in my day-to-day -day work, if I if a student asked me a question and I didn't know the answer, I would go to WA and then WA would tell me what to explain to the students. So I was learning just as much as the students that came to our office with questions. Um, and in that way, I gained a lot of knowledge. So if I could pass anything on to uh, those listening, it would be, if you have a question, uh, definitely reach out. It can be to our office, it can be to financial aid, or even if it's not a money thing, there's a ton of offices on, on the UW campus, such that like UW is a small city. So somewhere, someone somewhere knows the answer to your question. So all you need to do is start reaching out and uh, they can. We, everyone at UW wants to guide you to your uh, fullest potential and give you the best education experience you have. So just reach out. I think that's the, the biggest tip of all. That's great. Um, I wanted to um, mention that there's also some really great uh, one. If there hasn't been like a, um, an underlying like uh, theme is asking questions. This is a friendly group of people willing to help like, yes, things can be late. It is okay. They will try to help you as best as they can. Um, there's also, um, I hope that that feels, uh, a, or our families can get a sense of relief <laughs> because a lot of the folks that we are talking to and huddling up with um, are really sharing that aspect of having and encouraging your student to ask that question. Yes, it's great for families to know about it, but asking questions, meeting people, not being afraid to kind of um, to seek out that help. Um, I know that we have a lot of really wonderfully smart and resilient students and maybe asking for help is not has not been something that they are used to doing beyond friends and family. So uh, thank you so much for making that such a warm, um, like a <laughs> just a warm welcome to everybody um, uh, for our first year families and first year students. I also like to mention you folks have a really great calendar that I often use for our UW Parent Insider e-newsletter, just a plug for that, is there's a date about making changes in your schedule. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that. It's something that's not, it's, it, it, it's not tuition-based specifically, but it has to do with what if you change your mind about certain classes um, and, uh, 
if you could talk a little bit about that, that would be great. I feel like that's really great advice. <laughs> yeah, there can be different fees um, charged due to making changes to your schedule after the first week of classes. And there can be a number of different fees. So um, I would definitely recommend if you plan on changing your schedule after the first week of classes, it's always good to contact our office before making the change because we can work with you to give you an idea of what might happen and what to expect. So that way you're not surprised. Um, but yeah, it could be any type of change from like adding a class, dropping a class, swapping a class, changing the grading option. Like there's a lot of different schedule changes that you might not think about in the middle of the quarter, but could have a financial impact. Um, so definitely if you plan on making any changes after the first week, uh, contact our office and we can work with you. We're happy to. Yeah. But, but generally if you can make those changes within that first uh, calendar week of the quarter start and there's not really any financial consequence of that. So, you know, we understand that starting a quarter, especially your first year, there's going to be questions about, you know, hey, do I even like this class? You know, does it really make sense for me? Uh, you know, we give you a bit, basically a week to kind of make those decisions. Um, and um, if you make that change within that first week, again, there's no, there's no late fee, there's no change fee or anything like that. Um, and I wanted to make sure, um, Hua, there's some really great information that, um, that you sh they wanted to make sure that we uh, promote and share at the end. Uh, yeah, I have, a, I have another one here. So another like pro tip, if you will. Um, so uh, make sure to just check your tuition statement. It actually um, has a pretty detailed um, list of you know, what you're being charged for for a specific quarter. So if you see some, you know, if you see a amount that's owing, your tuition statement will kind of detail what that is. If you have questions on why that's been applied, that's kind of where we come in and kind of help decipher, you know, what that particular, uh, what we refer to as a charge is. Um, and, you know, it could be from a, something like as simple as, as changing um, a class after the first um, week. Um, usually that's like a late change fee. Um, or something like a course fee gets added, you know, if there's a, a particular course fee for the class that you just registered for. Um, uh, the same goes if you suddenly see like a, a credit balance on there will help decipher like why you're suddenly getting funds. <laughs> um, so um, to, to just rely on us to help decipher, you know, what's what's on there. Um, so yeah. Cameron, did you have, happen to have any, any tips? Uh, I think you covered the main ones. Um, uh, uh, I know that we have fun facts though, plenty, pl plenty of fun facts. Uh, uh, the, the, the one that we most like to tout is, uh, we nominated some student fiscal services mascots, uh, two stuffed animal alpacas. One's name is Kevin and the other one's name is Sansa because that was back when Game of Thrones was, was a thing. So that was the name. Um, the, the, the other fun fact is I once recorded a student fiscal services holiday music album and shared it within my department. I love it. We're going to have to, we're going to have to like re there needs to be a reissue of that uh, <laughs> holiday album. <laughs> that sounds great. And where are, where is student fiscal services? If we had to UW campus map, have a nice visual. Where are you located? Yeah, we're located in Schmitz Hall, so just kind of outside of the, the main campus. So let's say you're in Red Square, which is kind of that big square uh, adjacent to Kane Hall or Odegaard Library. Um, if you walk uh, west, uh, towards the west exit of it, and across the pedestrian bridge, we're kind of that upside down pyramid shaped building. It's odd, uh, kind of a brutalistic architecture. Um, a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of uh, student services are located in that building. So um, our office, Student Fiscal Services, we're on the first floor. Right next to us, conveniently, is the financial aid office as well. Um, you also find Registrar, International Student Services, um, Counseling Office. Yeah, Circle Circle Office. It's great. See, I. I'm all, I always want to make sure that we kind of uh, locate you on the campus map as well. So um, 
Wow, Cameron, thanks so much for huddling up with us, for sharing your great stories uh, and talking about the, the great student fiscal services team and what you do and how you support our students' success while they're here at UW. Thanks so much. Folks, you might see these guys again uh, during family orientation, so stay tuned. The Husky Huddle Up podcast is a collaboration between the University of Washington first year programs and parent and family programs to provide parents and families equitable access to information in support of their student success. The Husky Huddle Up is produced by me, Chloe Giselle, a senior in the UW Cinema and Media Studies program.